Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today on this webinar. My name is Chris Snott, and I'll, today I'll be presenting and showcasing some of the new enhancements made uh, for SSL certificate generation, installation, and the total process for 10.2. Uh, as you might now be aware of, we have become a certificate authority. Uh, we've had it in our latest news, if you do any type of RSS feed for us. Uh, and it's also been a, a really big buzz the last few months because what this allows us to do for our customers is, is really tremendous. The ease of which administrators can now secure their communication with a certificate from ISWARP, as I will show you today, uh, will greatly benefit companies that are using ISWARP 10.2 or later versions. Now, for versions earlier than 10.2, we will still be able to generate certificates for them. Uh, it will just not be in the automated fashion that we are uh, now in 10.2, which I will show you today. Uh, so let's first go through a little PowerPoint, just kind of briefly going over what SSL means uh, to any company and to you. And then, and then from there, we'll get into the actual generation, purchase, and installation process of these certificates. So why, why do companies use SSL and why should they use SSL? Obviously, uh, for secure communication. Uh, so in, in a lot of cases, uh, I get calls from customers looking to secure their communication, whether it's uh, for compliancy reasons or, or just for their own internal reasons. They want to they, they make sure that uh, there's no eavesdropping on their communication. And, and one of the questions I hear the most is, uh, you know, what is the difference between server certificates and personal certificates? So what we've done is we're splitting up two webinars. One today is going to be focused on the actual server side certificates. And then uh, one, I believe, uh, after the Thanksgiving break, that week will be on personal certificates. So why would a company want to use a server certificate? And mainly it's to secure your communication. And it's not just a mail communication, you know, the, the actual email transmission, but all communication, whether it's IM, uh, voice over IP, if you're doing that from the server, uh, HTTP, all of this communication in some, uh, some way or some form could possibly have your authentication information uh, or proprietary information that you obviously would not want anybody outside of your company to know. So this is where SSL plays a huge role in the communication aspect uh, for that different protocol. Obviously, a main reason for SSL is to prevent, uh, prevent eavesdropping. Ten years ago, this wasn't as an easy thing. This wasn't an easy thing for, for most people to do. Uh, but with the advances made in technology, in five minutes, someone can download an application with really not having any type of background in security or knowing even what to do and following a quick tutorial can be up and running and start packet sniffing uh, within a matter of minutes. So it's become even incredibly easy to, to pull this information. And I got a, a few examples of uh, encrypted and, and just standard communication that I'll show uh, in this PowerPoint just to give you a little rough idea of what each looks like. Now, as I just said, between server certificates and personal certificates, there is a, there is a huge difference. Uh, and you could have all the protocols, all communication from the box uh, be secured with, a, with SSL. The, that, that probably protects you about 80%. The last 20% is going to be the actual message itself. Uh, and that's where the personal certificates come in and allow uh, that sender to be fully confident that only the intended recipient will be able to view that message. That means not even the administrator, anyone that maybe uh, hacks that server, or somehow in transmission that message is stored on an archive or some other location, knowing only the intended recipient will ever be able to read that message. So uh, like I said, after Thanksgiving, we'll be going more into the personal certificates. So this is just a standard image of HTTP, HTTPS, IMAP, and, and secure IMAP. Uh, as you see, this actually covers multiple devices. Uh, you know, uh, it seems just from talking to some people that there maybe is a misconception that if your server uh, is protected, then everything is fine. But you know, with so many devices being used now for communication, you have your your mobile phone, laptops, uh, you know, different uh, tablet PCs, desktops, everything. 
has the possibility to transmit secure or, or standard communication. So in this little example, we have a desktop and a server-to-server -server doing encryption, and we have a laptop and a mobile phone just doing standard communication. So let's see what that communication looks like if someone were to packet sniff it. Now on the, on the left, you'll see IMAP communication unsecured. Uh, I didn't want to obviously put the direct passwords here, so I just showed you a little example of what can be seen. If you were to packet sniff a full IMAP, SMTP, HTTP communication, you could actually see the full login, what was used, uh, if there was no encryption done on the, on the login. Now if it's secured, and going over SSL, as you can see to the right, you, you won't be able to decrypt anything, so you won't know exactly what's going on. Side by side, these are the exact same packets I pulled from the same packet sniff, one showing what it looks like decrypted, or you know standard, and one showing what it looks like secured. The same thing is going to be said for HTTP. On one side, you can see every single subfolder, every file it touches when it's loading, uh, for instance, uh, webmail, you know, in the web client, every action that it's doing, if you do a packet sniff, you can see what server, what it's actually doing, who, what the login was, the skins, and so on, and beside what is what you would see if they were doing HTTPS. So you would have no idea what files on the back end it's touching, uh, and you know, obviously no, a, a, ha a hacker knowing that information of how your web client logs in, what files it touches, it then allows them to explore exploiting uh, your system in, in greater detail. So what we've done, uh, as I said earlier, to, to make SSL easier for our customers is we've become first step a certificate authority. So we can provide our customers with a, a signed certificate that is trusted. The back end of that is what we can do to automate that process, make that process easier for them to install and get running and, and encrypting all their communication. So what we recognized from a lot of customer tickets, a lot of customer interaction, is that a lot of these providers, the VeriSign, the Network Solutions, and really GoDaddy being one of the most prominent, they do not provide a good tutorial to anyone purchasing their certificates on how to actually format their certificates for specific servers. Uh, just a little background on how the certificates actually work when, when they're being installed into a server. You, you have a signed certificate, you have your private key, and then you also have, in a lot of cases, a, a root certificate, maybe an intermediate certificate, and in some cases, a wildcard or extended validation. You might have even up to six or seven certificates uh, that need to be combined. What, what this is called when combined is a certificate chain. And anyone that might be on the webinar now that has had to do this has probably run into some sort of problem if they were doing one of these higher echelon of certificates, you know, extended validation, wildcard, or even uh, organizational validation. Those, in most cases, come with five, at least four to five certificates, if not maybe up to seven. And trying to get that certificate chain worked out by yourself it is very painful. We recognize this, and uh, you know, in most cases, we will do it for you. And, and obviously, that puts a lot of strain on our support department trying to work out uh, these certificate chains because they're not published anywhere. Uh, so that's one of the major things that we focused on trying to to make easier for for our customers. Now, as a certificate authority, we do support every major type of certificate from the personal identification, which is the S-MIME certificate for personal email encryption, domain validation, organizational validation, extended validation, and multi-domain. So just a, a little brief uh, explanation of each. Personal identification is obviously just to encry encrypt your own email. So that's only issued to a, a specific individual's email address. Domain, domain validation is the lowest form of uh, security certificates. And what that will be used for is if you have one hard-coded specific domain, in this case we'll just say mail.domain.com, and that's the only URL that you want to have secure, you could do a domain validation certificate. Now that could be done for a single domain, or there is also a possibility to have a wildcard for that. 
So that's the lowest form uh, of SSL certificate that you can get. The next step up is organizational validation. And what that will actually show, uh, we'll actually show this uh, when, when we get to this step, when the certificate is issued, it has a spot that says this certificate is purchased by, and it allows you to have your company name, company name located there, instead of just showing the domain that it was actually registered for. So this gives a little more trust from the, from the user accessing that site that knows that this, for 100% certainty, was issued to the company uh, that, that owns this website. Extended validation goes a step further than that, and actually, I'm sure you've seen it, it actually presents the whole address bar green. Uh, if you go to Komodo, Network Solutions, any of their HTTPS pages, you'll see this, and that, that gives the highest level of trust, knowing that it, it's not only the company, the website that, that, uh, that owns this website, but it's also they've been vetted to the highest extent. When you get an extended validation certificate, uh, in, some day, in, in some cases it can take up to three days to actually get validated. The lastly is multi-domain. Uh, I, I know for a fact most of our customers that, that do any type of hosting or uh, ISP service provider type activity, this is probably the one that they most often uh, ask about or seek. And that's because you can, you can actually secure up to 100 domains with one certificate. So if you're hosting, you know, trying to get a, a specific SSL certificate for each domain, binding it to an IP so it can be negotiated properly, that, that is excruci excruciating and in some cases just not plausible. So the, the multi-domain certificate will allow you to, to get over this hurdle. So now let's go out into the actual generation process in 10.2 of an SSL certificate.